It is now time for another edition of Tech Briefs, where myself, Greg Nibbler, and Ken Young, the technology editor from Flipboard, recap some of the biggest stories in tech from this week. We've got Ken joining us from his work from home setup. Hello, Ken. I'm doing good, and uh, what, uh, what I want to do here is start off with some of the big stories going on from tech, and uh, let's talk about this. Towards the beginning of the week, we got a surprise tweet from Sony uh, uh, regarding the PlayStation 5. Now, we still haven't seen the console itself, but we did get to see the new controller, and a couple of big surprises with that. One, they're, they're going away from the DualShock name to DualSense, and I have to say the controller itself to me, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it definitely looks a little more ergonomic. They've brought the light bar encompasses a lot more of it. Uh, the even the, um, the the pads are are more sleek and kind of uh, for more form fitting with the actual controller itself. I thought it was a pretty cool reveal. Ken, what did you think about this? So I think when I looked at it, it uh, for some reason it reminded me almost like the form factor which with, with with what you get with the Xbox controller. I, I mean, it, there's there's certainly some similarities versus what. Uh, you had with the previous uh, iterations uh, of the controller, so I th people are billing, calling this like the the a major a significant upgrade in in PlayStation's uh, 25 years. Uh, and, and you're right, as we talked as we talked about, there's there's all these different changes. There's uh, adaptive triggers, so that, you know, depending on how it gives you a little bit more of that uh, real life experience in terms of when you want to, you know, when you, whether you want to how you're pressing a trigger, how you're you know using a a, a crossbow or those type of things. Uh, there's also a haptic uh, a trick, uh, haptic touch as well. Um, there's now a it, they've rebranded the share button to create button. So which is kind of a even though it's just a, a different name, it might be I, I think that might be foreshadowing some interesting uh, updates, especially as the PlayStation Five. Uh, what happens with, when they open it up to developers if they open it up to developers? Uh, but I think this is this is a, a, a I really like the the way that that, that this controller looks. Um, you know the the variation between a, a dual sense dual shock it's it's still kind of uh, up in the air for me but um you know i think this is this is a good good step forward for for playstation uh the question now is like look we have we have the new logo that the the ps5 logo came out was announced uh, at ces uh, earlier this year uh we know what uh, what the controller is but what's the console going to look like right and as we, uh, we i right. think Everything has kind of gone all up in the air with with the pandemic, so we don't know uh, all these previous events that they're going to hold it at. You know, E3, GDC, all these other events have all you know are all postponed or all canceled. So, what what is the opportunity for the for the, for these companies? Whether it's and it's you know Microsoft has already kind of really unveiled their console and kind of really start, been up uh, ahead of the game. Uh, but we know some of the specs about the PlayStation Five, but we don't actually know what it looks like, nor do we know what the cost is. So as we get closer to holidays, you know, there's still a lot of questions to be answered uh, to, about the about this new new iteration. Yeah, yeah, definitely a lot of questions to be answered. But I do I do like that at least they're showcasing something. Hopefully, we get to see the console soon. Xbox is supposed to be having an event of their own uh, that's going to be coming up where they have revealed a lot of it already, but maybe showcasing some of the more capabilities of it. Uh, but yeah, so PlayStation with this, that was that tweet earlier this week. Uh, continuing on here with the trending news from this week, certainly streaming content is huge right now. We're all at home watching a lot of it. A um, couple of things for this week. One, uh, we have the launch of Quibi, which is the new kind of unique platform that's designed just for phones, 10 minute programming. Um, coming out at a strange time already when it's kind of designed for people commuting or people who are waiting in lines places. They even said that and now Nobody's commuting or waiting in a line anywhere because we're all at home. So that Quibi side of it, uh, definitely an interesting thing. And then of a, of a kind of a side note too, uh, Disney Plus also announcing that they have 50 million subscribers. So that's a whole um, other issue there. Disney Plus doing really well with that. But I guess just to kind of go through these quickly, uh, Quibi, have you subscribed to it yet, Ken? No, I haven't. But uh, of course, it's, it's, you know, this is an interesting, it's a pivot for their use cases, right? As you talked about, this is for commuters or those that are... Yeah. Uh, you know, on the go. Now it's like, hey, you have nowhere to go. Do you want to consume something? You know, quick bites uh, of, of content from from Chrissy Teigen, Liam Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth, and and Je Jennifer Lopez and many others uh, on on your phone, right? Uh, so I I don't have this. Uh, I I thought about uh, uh, subscribing to this uh, since I have T-Mobile. T-Mobile is the exclusive uh, carrier for Quibi. Uh, so you, those that have a specific uh, select uh, family plan will be able to. 
uh, get a one year uh, of Quibi. Uh, but you know, since I don't have a family plan, I'm like, eh, whatever. Uh, but I mean, look, if there's some look. This is exclusive to a phone, so you can't stream it onto uh, onto a bigger a bigger screen. So I think those that are at home, it's kind of like. I would like to still be able to watch it on a bigger screen. Why else? I mean, I want to take advantage of it, but you can't. I don't know. Right. Um, but it's it's early on. Uh, it's been the first week. I think that, that this is this is a an, an unfortunate optimal time for for Quibi. I mean, it's like your captive audience in a in a in an odd way of saying it. Uh, so let's see how how this goes. Uh, there there are plenty more shows right. that they have planned. Uh, like they said, 175 uh, shows planned for this year. As theoretically that actually still goes holds true with with this pandemic uh but uh, as we talked about with disney plus you know disney plus now it's like what what, a few months old now it's like with 50 million subscribers obviously people are stuck at home they want things to entertain their kids and themselves instead of just staring at the computer and worry about all this horrible stuff that's going on in the world might as well uh you know watch frozen or onward or uh you know anything all the all the mandalorian uh show uh, episodes all, all over again right uh, so, but there's, as we talked about previously, there's a lot of uh, uptick in terms of streaming services and movie uh, anywhere. Another Disney platform uh, just announced that they're opening up the, a beta program to to allow people to share their movies. Obviously, there's some caveats with that. And uh, Bob Iger, now the chairman of Disney, uh, he said that he's open to the idea of potentially having more movies move sh- go straight to Disney Plus. So instead of just waiting for the theater. So. I think depending on how long we are self-isolating and practicing social distancing or physical distancing, whatever you want to call it, this is, at, you know, there's going to be some real dynamic changes in how we consume uh, uh, entertainment uh, beyond going to, to the theaters. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it, the ramifications are going to be definitely interesting. I will say that we're going to be talking to Meg Whitman, the CEO of Quibi2, next week on Digital Trends Live, so we'll get some more answers uh, then from their perspective of it. But yeah, two, two kind of uh, very different approaches uh, to streaming services, but definitely both making news this week. Uh, final thing here to talk about to Google, we are still getting some products that are being launched, but also uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Google Pixel 4a. But before that, Google Stadia Pro, they announced, is out for free. Now, Google Stadia launching last November, I believe it was, uh, has not had a great run of it. There's definitely been a lot of people who um, who weren't excited about what they did. They had some real hiccups in the rollout, but now putting it out there for free, which means you get to play some of the exclusive games for free as well uh, that are that are available on there. Um, I, I subscribe to it because why not? It's free to try out. I believe it's a 90 day free trial is what you're on right w- when you sign up for it. So this is kind of a make it or break it moment, I feel like for Google Stadia with all these people at home, as you mentioned before, a captive audience for, for lack of a better word, um, because everybody wants to stream and game and, and do something at home. This is the chance for people to try it out. If they don't make it through this, if not enough people subscribe, I don't know where this service is gonna go. Clearly, it's Google. They've got the money to back it up. But uh, let me ask you this. I asked you about Quibi. Have you signed up for a free trial of Google Stadia Pro? No. No, I haven't even done that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, look, I, but that, it, this, is, this is certainly tempting. Like, I, 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 will, I will admit that a lot of these type of trials, whether it's uh, Quibi or whether it's Stadia Pro, whether it's uh, uh, all these other streaming services that we talked about in previous weeks on Tech Briefs, you know, it, it, it really has captured my attention in terms of like, oh, well, it's it's you know ninety days sure or two months free whatever great you know but but it's like okay how long I mean are is this more of a of a, a, a positive thought are are these companies optimistic that this is going like we're going to be out of this whole disaster in 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 two months time look I, and I get look if we're, if we're, if you love the service pay for it. Uh, this go, you know, this is this is they deserve to get the money if you if you enjoy playing it, you know, no, they shouldn't be giving this away for free. Uh, but I think it, yeah. I don't I'm not really sure. I think I'm constantly going through this battle between whether I want to get a Switch, which no one can get a Nintendo Switch, uh, PlayStation, Xbox. Uh, but do, do I want to go for the Google Stadia, knowing right. all the previous issues that have gone to play? Like, I mean, we're already dealing with with uh, a, a, a really stressed out internet right now. Do I, and based on what we've talked about in the past, we know that Google Stadia really drains through, uh, you know, bandwidth really, really quickly. So, do I really want to risk that at this point? Uh, and there's certainly uh, some good titles that are with Stadia, uh, and Stadia Pro is uh, is more of their premium version, um, and it's gonna it's rolling out now across four, I think 14 countries in the in the next 48 hours. Right. Yeah, that you can actually. Uh, but 
I yeah. mean, I don't. I'm not. I'm not really sure if, whether I want to make that investment into there. Same thing with Apple Arcade and all these other things. I think everyone chooses what they want to do. Um, I if you if you do Google Stadia now, it's like here and now. You can go ahead and play it, but I'm I'm not quite there yet. Yeah, we'll have to see where it all uh, where it all goes. You know, how many people are going to be trying it. And I know we're out of time. There's also the Google Pixel 4a, which, as usual, pretty much all the details leaked beforehand um, before that that's going on. And just a reminder, though, that all these companies are still going to be putting out products and how they put them out, how it goes, what they're going to do for it, whether it's going to be a big presentation or they just leak it out ahead of time, kind of like Google does, that like Google's done before. We'll have to see, but you can read all the details about those at Digital Trends and Flipboard. And Ken, as always, great talking to you. I will talk to you right back here next week with more Tech Briefs. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it.